Thanks, Adrian. I wasn't sure where he was going to go with that intro, <laughs> so I'm relieved a little bit. Uh, well, thank you um, so much for inviting me to this conference. It's been a, a wonderful day. And what I want to share with you today is a little bit about my world, about cave diving and the kinds of science that I get involved in in underwater caves. So let me just begin with a little short video introduction of what I do. My name is Jill Heinerth. More people have walked on the moon than have been to some of the places my exploration has taken me right here on Earth. I swim through the veins of Mother Earth, revealing the secrets inside our planet. This is my visual studio, where I capture unique images to share with the world. Whether working with scientists discovering new species, tracking climate change, or examining our freshwater resources, I have followed the course of the Earth's water wherever it leads me. From inside Antarctic icebergs to deep underground cave systems, I have combined technology and curiosity to further our understanding of our fragile planet. As the first explorer in residence of the Royal Canadian Geographical Society, I look forward to inspiring today's youth to realize the full potential that is at their fingertips. Embracing exploration, they can develop new initiatives to meet environmental, political, and social challenges of the 21st century. Creating and applying new technologies, they will carve out lives and careers along new, unexplored paths. My goal is to empower young Canadians to pursue and investigate all possibilities. We are, every one of us, explorers in residence. So as you can imagine, my, my upbringing sort of terrified my mother. <laughs> this is what my childhood sounded like. Oh, mom, can we, can we please, can we please, can we please keep the snake? <laughs> so probably everything I did as a, a kid in my sort of age of exploration terrified her. And, and things really haven't changed since that time as I've uh, continued to explore through my life in all sorts of incredible places from inside Antarctic icebergs to uh, the swamps of Florida, where I spend half of uh, my time these days. But my office environment is within underwater caves. And this will just give you a little feel for what cave diving is like. I mean, imagine yourself right now in this room if the lights came down to nothing and you had to get out of this room following a thin guideline of string woven beneath the chairs in the room just to get to safety. Every step you make obviously has to be measured in breaths because everything you deal with has to be managed underwater, every emergency, every problem that you deal with. But these are also places of such remarkable wonder and beauty. They are places that offer us incredible scientific opportunities and discovery about human physiology and about so many other sciences that I'll share with you today. So this is my workplace. The darkness may repel most people, but for me, it's an incredible place of wonder and beauty. So I grew up in Canada, but my uh, part-time home is in the caves of North Florida, right near Ginny Springs, and I'm sure some of you people have, uh, have been there. It's a beautiful place. But as I said, my uh, work takes me around the world, from Antarctica to uh, places like Bermuda, off the walls of Bermuda. And my job um, really entails a use of 
my artistic background, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, that's my formal training, um, and combining that art with life support. So oftentimes I'm swimming through these environments with still cameras or large video cameras, scientific gear, and lots of extra equipment. And why do I do it? That's a question I get a lot, not least of which from my mother. <laughs> but it's because caves are worthy of exploration. Caves are also the pipeline for the groundwater that serves humanity. And so I tell people, when I dive, I'm swimming through the veins of Mother Earth. So I'm inside the lifeblood of the planet that nourishes everything that we do and everyone that we interact with. And that's an incredible privilege. And to be able to track the location of where this groundwater flows through the environment is not just important and interesting, but it's probably the most important issue of the next century, understanding our water resources on this planet. You know, thankfully, it is um, being discussed a little bit in our current election cycle. Um, and so I thought I'd offer this slide. <laughs> This is an actual quote, if you can believe it. <laughs> Donald Trump thinks it will be able to use Gatorade to water crops because electrolytes will help them grow. <laughs> now, I uh, work with biologists quite often. They're very interested in the unique animal life that lives within the darkness of caves. These animals are fascinating. Many are very small. Um, this is uh, a small shrimp. And as you'll see, there's no pigment whatsoever in this animal, and there's also no eyes. Yet he has extremely sophisticated sensory organs. Uh, here's another cave-adapted animal. We've got a little sort of video clip here. This is called a remipede. There's three, one in each jar here. It turns out that the two on the outside were actually one species of remipede, and the one in the middle was a different species. So the little guys on their back just, you know, flicking their their little feet, um, that's how they feed, but this guy actively feeds swimming through the water column in the center. Um, so very, very interesting. These animals are, you know, they're very small, but if uh, this particular animal was the size of a house cat, it would be the deadliest thing on the planet because he's got fangs and he can inject and kill something 40 times his size and consume it over a very long period of time because as you can imagine, caves are a very food scarce environment. So fascinating animals that can teach us a lot about um, survival and evolution. We find them in environments such as this. This particular cave has a mix of freshwater and saltwater environments within the cave. Now, uh, these animals are like swimming dinosaurs because some of them have remained unevolved for over 65 million years. That means they predate the extinction of the dinosaurs. So we can find that swimming animal in the cave today, an identical replica in the fossil record, you know, 65 to 75 million years old. So it hasn't changed in all that time. And that can give us or give scientists some very interesting information. Caves are stunningly beautiful environments. This is one of my favorite places that I've ever had a chance to photograph in Bermuda. And this cave had been closed to cave diving access for 35 years when I got permission for one opportunity to go shoot this photograph. And uh, what a privilege that was to see it. Caves aren't necessarily like the shots I showed you in that video just to get you warmed up. Some of them have very large spaces, like aircraft sp hangars, spaces the size as large as this room, and uh, enormous environments to swim through. I also work with physicists. Physicists are interested in underwater caves as locations that give them information about global climate change. In this particular photograph, you can see that there's some reddish-orange coloration to the cave, and that's of great interest because that is actually dust from the Sahara Desert. Yet, this cave is in the Bahamas on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. So during very dry epochs on planet Earth, the Sahara dust is blown up into the atmosphere. It comes across the Atlantic Ocean, falls down on the island of Abaco. The rain carries it down in between grains of sand and is deposited within the calcite formations in this cave that were formed in intervals when the cave was dry. 